going, just going. Something just touched my face. Monks, white ladies, and contact from beyond await the team in County Offaly. <laughs> surrounding me is said to date back to the early 6th century. There's been so much paranormal activity here and ghost sightings that the staff have literally had to learn to live with it. So how will we cope when we spend the next 24 hours at Kennedy Castle in Southern Ireland? Situated midway between Dublin and Limerick, the first castle at Kennedy was destroyed and then rebuilt early in the 13th century. The castle was under Gaelic and then English control in the 1600s, before it was destroyed again by the rebellious Republican forces during Ireland's Civil War in 1922. Rebuilt later that decade, it now remains in family hands, contradicting its troublesome past. This is a place of siege, death and, of course, destruction. And because of that, there are many stories of ghostly goings on. Ghosts, phantoms, and of course, banshees. Banshees special only to the Irish, harbingers of death. Always women hovering above the place, dressed in green or in red, waiting for an imminent death. Here, in one of the attic rooms, right at the top of the castle, many stories have been circulating around the castle and in the local town about how much paranormal activity occurs in this room. Dark shadows, the ghost of a white lady, and the noise of a child whimpering in the dead of night. All these things happen in Geraldine's room. This great banquet hall is home to the apparition of a tall monk dressed in black. He's been seen here for many years, some say since the 1100s. Even if not seen, its presence is said to be felt by guests and staff. To some fortunate people, the monk is said to give accurate prophecy, but he doesn't just haunt here. He's also been seen in here, throughout the dungeon bar. He's a soothsayer that visits a lady called Margaret. He's about six foot six, and his name is Hugh. He did very strange things. I would set the tables, and when the manager would come across, half the cutlery would be missing. So I would put it back. So I was getting tired of this, and after about three, four times, I asked who was in the hall and if they would stop. And it was the following week that he appeared. And then afterwards, over the years, he told me major events that would take place, and these things have happened. the origin of these standing stones but so much paranormal activity has been reported on this very site we just couldn't ignore it strange lights have been seen noises have been heard and dark shapes have been seen winding in and out of the stones so what is causing all this activity we have 24 hours to find out joining us in the Emerald Isle is Kieran O'Keefe with so much paranormal activity reported here, this could prove to be a busy night for our parapsychologist. So, Kieran, here we are at Kennedy Castle. Is there anything that you're expecting to happen here that might be different from anywhere else that we've been to? I'm quite excited about being at Kennedy Castle because the focus of all the eyewitness accounts is on apparitions. What do you think about eyewitnesses like, for instance, Margaret, who's saying that she's actually interacting with the, with the monk? That's extremely rare extremely rare. There's a famous researcher called Tyrrell in 1943 who kind of defined all of the apparitions and he said that in less than one percent of cases there's actual interaction with apparitions. So it's very, very rare to find an eyewitness who reports actually interacting. So that'd be interesting. We've got a lot to look forward to. A lot, <laughs> yeah. Should be good.
This historic site is said to be rife with tortured souls, possibly victims of its violent and bloody past. As part of our investigation, we've invited medium Derek Akora to join us in Ireland. But just who will we make contact with at Kinnity Castle? Now, although I'm not at this moment to be um, receiving activity mm. as such in this area, this space, uh, I am aware, just linking in here, with, um, it's as if I want to change the whole of the scenery here, totally to what it is. Mm -hmm. And I want to, it, in actual fact, um, there's no two ways about it. Um, there's a feeling of um, prayer state, but it's like as if, you know, I want to walk not here, but I want to walk along a long passageway. And that passageway leads to a big opening. And I've just been mentally been given like a, a mind's eye picture of um, an abbey, monastery mm -hmm. conditions. I don't feel bad about it. I feel quite good. But what I do also feel is that we've got an individual here who walks through this area. Yeah. And I got this a little bit a couple of seconds ago earlier, where I just I'm like this, you see, and I'm not scurrying, but I'm moving at speed with this person, and I want to do that. Right. In prayer state. Okay. So it's a holy man. It's a male. It's a man, but I also want to say I am covered up and mm -hmm. cloaked. Right. Or they're making me feel as if I'm cloaked, mm -hmm. taking his position. Okay. And most definitely, I may be wrong at this moment, but I just feel as if we're talking about the energy of a man that goes back hundreds of years and without a doubt gives me the impressions of like a monk. Now is this, is, is he in visitation here? Or no, is, he's or grounded. He, well, why would that be? Um, I feel he's wanted to stay here. Um, I feel he left his physical life not at an old age mm. and with him, it's only that the first vibrations that I'm getting, I feel as if I want to go to the throat with this male. I felt as if just for those moments, I was sitting at a table, a long table, and as if I was eating. And I know it's to do with him. And I felt as if a choking, a feeling of choking, something stuck. With the castle having been built on the site of an Augustian abbey, we were all intrigued to discover more about the monk. We moved deeper into the dungeon bar in the hope that this would throw light on who this person was. You see, it come into this area as well, Evie. Mm. Again, thick and fast in here, the movement of this person in here, without a doubt. Um, when you say thick and fast, are you talking about the actual movement of this person? Yes, when he like comes through, yes. Well, yeah, I feel he does go at speed, actually, Kieran. Also now, for some reason, why it's coming again from the residual energy. This person has got the energy and the personality of a person who's in prayer, a monk, and I get this, like, sense of fun with him, sense of, like, humour. Mm. Not You wouldn't imagine a person like that to have this. I would say, from the energies here, he'd be a good orator, he'd be a good talker, a good talker. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, but... I just feel as if, uh, if he wanted to make his presence felt, mm. he would really, really make the effort, this, this monk. So we could be in so for, we could be, hopefully, tonight, he could try and communicate Absolutely, because I just feel his energy, is, he, he wants to, and we're here for this, mm. so I'm just very hopeful. Derek may have identified the presence of the roaming monk, whose image has reportedly been seen numerous times. Is this the ghost of Father Hugh? And who else is waiting for us at Kinnity Castle? Something just touched my face. Something just <laughs> touched my face. <laughs> You're communicating with us.
As our investigation continues at Kennedy Castle, we cross the courtyard to the Great Banquet Hall. Although frequently used now for ceremonies and celebrations, it does have a darker side to it. It is here that the apparition of a tall monk has frequently appeared. Could this be the person Derek identified in the dungeon bar? It's a beautiful room, isn't it? Yes, that sounds like... Is what? Alfred, Alfie, Alfred. OK, thank you. Is that linked with him? Is that linked with him? Augustine Monk. An Augustine monk. Right. Sam said Alfred and then he said Alfie. Alfred Alfie. OK. And would that be with the surname? Reardon? It is. Alfred Reardon. Mm -hmm. okay. OK, thank you. And there's also... So he comes in here. Mm -hmm. He comes in here. In actual fact, he's, he spends so much time in this room that... Uh, he loves to see people. He absolutely, he walks, when people are sitting here, physical in the present day, he, ming, he goes in between people. And I don't feel he, he um, does anything like um, negative, you know, elevating things, but it's like as if, I wouldn't be at all surprised if a person was, um, he loves weddings. <laughs> yeah. He loves weddings. Mm. He loves it. Mm. That's his favorite, is love, mm. Ivy. He loves the bride. <laughs> he loves to see the bride coming in. Mm. In actual fact, one of his party pieces, so to speak. You know the bride and the bridegroom as yeah. they walk through? He gets in between. <laughs> and I wouldn't be at all surprised whether some of these brides feel this, like... Something, something between, happening in between, between them. them. Yeah. And um, there's one who um, sees him, another spirit man, um, that doesn't re re relate to him and they stay out of each other's way. Why? Why? Fitzgerald is opposite to him. Fitzgerald is the opposite to him. In personality. Is that in personality? Go on, do it again, please. Prayer state, the monk, okay. Fitzgerald, the opposite. Just Fitzgerald's of the dark. Fitzgerald of the dark? Practice the black arts. Ooh. If you ask Sam now, do you, would Sam be able to tell us if he thinks that we would be able to see Alfred? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if he's so often in coming here and, and he's been seen by lots of people, does Sam think... Sam says he was, he was uh, around here at midday mm. and he was very interested in what, was, what he was watching at. <laughs> yeah. Actually, this soul um, was conversing, talking with a, a spirit lady here. So there was the spirit lady and this lovely monk in discussion talking about the cruise movement today, around midday. And she was quite happy with it as well. And I feel maybe these two are going to do something, yeah? Who is she, then? Who is she, Sam? Sam says, go upstairs and you'll get her energy. Oh, right. Go on. Say the name. Catherine. Mm -hmm. Catherine. Right. She's a good soul. She's a good lady. He used to say Catherine, and then he, it sounded like Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Catherine Hutchinson. Catherine Hutchinson. After extensive research, we found that Derek had identified a woman with a direct connection to the castle. Lady Catherine Hutchinson was the wife of a previous owner, Thomas Bernard. It was she who in 1811 commissioned an extension to the castle. As we headed upstairs with our night vision cameras, we couldn't help wondering if the ghostly images said to appear in Geraldine's room were in fact Catherine. You know, Ivy, I'm very aware. I was made, I, I wasn't doing it consciously, but I was made to put my hand onto this here, this four poster bed, here up at this angle, and suddenly my hand became smaller than what it was, the sensation, mm -hmm. and it was very, very um, uh, slim and petite. It was the hand of a woman, and I know a spirit itself is here, and um, I can hear a voice, I can hear a voice. 
She keeps on saying winter. Thomas, her beloved, her beloved. Thomas winters, winter, winter, winter. She keeps on talking about Thomas and winter. Mm -hmm. And- Is this Catherine? It, who are you? Who are you? No, this is another woman. Mm -hmm. This is another female. So it's not the woman that you, you said downstairs? No, that you... no. This is another disparate person. Come on. 16 something, 1600 and something. And she was, um, she lived here. And she was Thomas's lady? I feel she was Thomas's lady. Do we know her name? Did you say her name? Can you give me? She's saying the Colonel, Colonel. Yeah. Colonel. Yeah. Colonel. To Colonel Thomas Winters. Uh -huh. uh, I feel um, what was here before this bedroom, or she had a very strong connection in this area, this passageway, mm -hmm. and here. And I feel she comes back here um, when she's in visitation, and it's a fond memory. But I don't feel it's got anything to do with this actual bed. I feel now that we're in the atmosphere total and we've been here for a little while now is that we've got roaming spirits within this building that the vast majority are in visitation okay. and they're in visitation because they were pleased when they were here they enjoyed happy experiences and it's like them coming back just to see and again not negative any mm -hmm. nice soul yeah nice soul um, and also if she, uh, if she has actually been seen here, I feel that she would come in from the passageway, make a noise around this door, and the person who was lying here would hear, it may even be footsteps, or movement mm -hmm. in this room. And I feel this is her, it's me just trying to retrace. I feel she would come in and she would look like this mm -hmm. and walk towards this door. Yeah. There's a view who's passing to it like this, and then, Maybe if the person was awake, we'd then see the movement of the shadowy figure going towards the window, and maybe going through this way. Just could I just walk into that yeah, space go on, go and go just on. watch the step? Okay. Yeah, watch it. Just walk in. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why that could be brought. I feel that um, as she does make that walk across the room at times. Um, there would definitely be um, phenomena taking place in this area where this bath is and what have you. And as I come here, it's like a, a, a mental picture comes in in front of me and something happened, I don't know what, but something happened to this lady, around this lady, that she thinks about and it's like as if she goes back in time and what was given to me mentally was very clearly this was, mm -hmm. and I don't know what, but it went, I've got one, six, six, nine. 16, 16. And I take that to be 16, 69. Mm -hmm. Something happened, something linked with this lady. Um, Can you ask her, is she listening to you now, is she? I, I, yeah, I feel she is, yeah. Can you ask her if she can do something then for us? Okay. Make a noise or anything? Please, good lady. Um, we are very aware of your presence and it would be absolutely really really loving received if you could do something in this area of this bedroom I know that you're a sweet of nature so we respect and we show you lots of love we'll stay quiet Yeah. The noise, although loud, didn't come from Geraldine's room. So was this just the innocent creaking of an old castle or the start of something much more sinister? Little did we know, but for some of us, events were about to get far worse. We're not frightened of you. We know that you can't hurt us. Just go in, just go in. Oh my god! 
Having already discovered several pieces of sensory information from Derek, we decided to split up into groups in readiness for the night vigils. One area of Kennedy Castle that has caused a lot of interest is the room that is now used as a gymnasium. Kieran joined Carl down there and soon realised that something was waiting for them. If there's any presence down here, would like to make contact with us. Please knock once for yes, twice for no. Did that? Did you scare the at me? I hear knocking. That's unnerving. I'm going to knock once on this wood. Please try to respond by knocking back. That is very, that is, that, that is quite. That is. See, that would send you off, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah. Although the unexplained thuds from the gymnasium had left Carl feeling a little uneasy, he kept a brave face and ventured alone to Geraldine's room. This area has gained local notoriety for its mysterious shadows, including the regular apparition of a ghostly white lady. If you are really here, Please, please try to show yourself to me. Hmm. Now that's interesting, the battery's going. Now the battery was here um, uh, just a minute ago, it had 20 odd minutes on it. So. Great, now I'm hearing noises. As a professional cameraman, Carl knows this equipment well. So when a fully charged battery suddenly loses power, he starts to worry. And if the unexplained noises in Geraldine's room are already a concern, his fear factor is about to rapidly rise. Great, what was that? What was that? Somebody just touched my face. Oh, crying Something just touched my face, something just touched my face. I'm not running away from it. The sensation of being touched on the face in an empty corridor had clearly distressed one of the team's most fearless members. But having immediately replaced the camera's battery, Carl bravely chose to return to the same part of the building. This wasn't one of his better decisions. I'm going back up there. I cannot explain how scared I am going back up here. you 
wish for. I am so scared. This is where I was when um, I thought something touched my face earlier. I can't, I can't tell you how scared I am. I, I'm so scared. It's gone very cold all of a sudden. It's kind of. I feel like I'm, I'm like, I'm surrounded. Me, there's movement all over the place. There is movement everywhere. I am scared. Is anyone here? Please try to show yourself to me. Footsteps. By his own admission, Carl finds fear very hard to embrace. We know that if he gets scared, then we should all worry. The noises that Kieran and Carl had earlier encountered in the gymnasium had intrigued our historian Richard Felix. Despite his apprehension, he wanted to investigate these unexplained thuds for himself. Now aware of Carl's unwelcome experiences, we all decided to stay in groups of two or more people. So on this occasion, Derek accompanied Richard, just in case. Is there someone there? Is there someone there that wants to make contact? We know you're here. What is that? Something there, there. It was. Someone? Someone went past. Movement of feet, legs, and stop there. Well, there's definitely nobody. No, Sorry, God, no did guess. you not see it? No, I didn't. But I met, we may have got it on film. This is the footage recorded at the exact time that Derek saw movement outside the window. On close inspection, the outline of what resembles a figure can be seen walking in the distance. We later discovered that no one was outside the building at this time. Father Hugh, if you're the person that appears, the Augustinian monk, the six-foot Augustinian monk that dresses in black, that appears in many places around this building, then we ask you to show yourself down here. If it's not the Augustinian monk, is it Lady Catherine Hutchinson? Is it Mr. Bernard? Thomas Bernard, is it you that's up there? Twice. You are communicating with us. Tap twice again for yes. You're tapping, you're communicating with us. Do you occupy this building still because you belong here? That was one. 
one van, I think. Yeah, it was one. So you don't think you belong here. Do you still occupy this place or haunt this place because for some reason you're trapped? Right away. No, again. Do you occupy this building because you loved it once? Just communicating, all right. It's communicating, Richard. We have previously encountered on Most Haunted sounds that we thought were supernatural communication. However, the preciseness and clarity of the responses on this investigation have been astounding. In addition, what Derek and Richard witnessed through the window now seems to be the closest we have ever come to catching a ghost on camera. We've been getting a remarkable response back to Richard's questioning. I've never up to date in any investigation heard a response to date so quickly and what have you and this all I can say in this atmosphere Richard is so much and thank you for this communicator. I, I just consider this such a privilege mm. that whatever or whoever is, is around here has been making the responses that it has. Yeah. And you're still here. You're still with us, aren't you? Oh my Curtis. god. Again, we checked everyone's whereabouts at the time of these noises, only to find that no one was in the vicinity of or above the gymnasium. Convinced that some sort of spirit entity was trying to make contact, we all prepared to delve deeper, and any doubts that did exist would soon be dispelled. Father Thomas, are you there? We have all been astonished by our night so far at Kinnity Castle in the Republic of Ireland. In addition to Carl feeling that his face had been touched in a lonely corridor, Derek and Richard seem to have received messages from some sort of spirit in the gymnasium. Richard was eager to see if this occurrence would be repeated one more time with different people present. Somehow, he convinced Rachel and a new member of the team, Kerry, to join him back in the gymnasium. Little did they know the sort of welcome that they would receive. All I did was start to ask, is there a spirit? Is there someone in this building or in this area that wants to make contact with us again, as you did earlier? Anybody from the spirit world that's trapped in this environment that wants to speak to us, please try hard and tap on the ceiling. Is that someone? Is that someone trying to make contact with us? Are you banging on the ceiling now? There's a Thomas Bernard that Derek's picked up. Yeah. And I asked, are you Thomas? Okay. And I got a response. Please, can you make a noise nearby us? that we can be 100% certain you're trying to make contact with us. Is there somebody here that's trying to make contact with us? Oh my God! Is, Is there anybody here? Is there a spirit with us now trying to make contact? Give us another sign. I know you're trying hard and you're trying to make contact. Please try again. Give us a sign. Thomas, if that's you that's making the noise, please, please, can you do it again for us? Just so we can be 100% sure that it's you trying to make contact with us. Thomas, are you there? Thomas, are you with us? Oh, for God's sake. We know you're there. We know you're with us. We know you're there. We don't fear you. Thomas, is it you? <laughs> Thomas, I believe it's you. If you're still there,
bang on the ceiling. All the members of our Most Haunted team know there is always the possibility of witnessing paranormal activity, but when it does happen, it can be extremely frightening. Some of the crew would have been very pleased to leave Kinnity Castle now, but having experienced so many strange and unexplained phenomena, we felt we had to complete our investigation. We had one more test to perform. Table tipping in the form of a seance has been practiced for hundreds of years as a way of evoking a physical reaction from any entities present. The castle's owner, Con Ryan, has previously encountered paranormal activity in the building. So we invited him into the banqueting hall to join Derek, Kieran, Kath and myself. We were apprehensive, but none of us were prepared for what we and the most haunted cameras we're about to witness. Do you want me to speak first? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I can't think of that. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here in the room with us? Is there any spirit persons here in the room with us? If there is, and you would like to communicate with us, please can you try and move this table that we're standing around? Please can you try and move it? Either move it in a circle or try and tilt it. This way that we know that you're listening to us. Is there anybody here in this room with us now? If there is, please use our collective energy. Please move the table if you can. Please try and lift it. We know that you're here. We don't mean you any harm. Please ignore the cameras and everybody that's around. We're here because we want to give everybody some hope that there is life after death. If you want us to go, if you want us to leave your house, then please move the table. Right, I felt that, but was it's that somebody like, here? Is that talking? No. Yes. No, it's like does. If you want to, it is. No, it's I moving. can't tell. Just feel it's moving. going, it's, it's going. Yeah. If you want to... It's oh. going. Oh, yeah, it's going. It's going hey, it is going. It's going to be okay. It is going. If you want us to leave, please make it more. Please tilt it some more. It's going, Ives. Please. You can feel it? Yes. Yeah. No one is I'm putting not, any weight no. on you. No, no, no. Please move the table some more. That's brilliant. Please, can you make it more? Oh, oh, yes. If you wish us to leave, please make it more pronounced and we will Come go. On. This, we need to know more from you. Would you like us to leave your house, your holy house? If you do, please make it more. Please rattle the table as hard as you can. Please do it. Oh, listen. Come on, please try harder. Can you, you if you can hear that? my voice, yeah. please try so much harder. Keep going, Evie. Please, please, we're trying so hard to communicate with you. Use all our energies. Use our energies. Connie's here. Okay. Don't be frightened. Please make the table you bang. Your hands very light, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please move the table. It's more. Coming, we coming. want it to move more. Please move it more. If you want us to go. We need a more definite sign. I haven't even got these last two fingers on. No, I haven't me. either. Please move some more. Move the table some more. Would you like us to go? Would you like us to go? Would you like us to stay? I feel it as the end of it myself anyway. I don't yeah. know much about this. Well, it, I mean... Gosh, I mean, Did you see any if of everyone that on had tape? light no, fingers on this, these last two yeah, fingers not even look on. Look at that. Yeah. yeah, but I felt it moving now. I mean, I came in. Uh, you sensed that first, yeah, didn't you? I did, yeah. No, the movement was, was flowing mm. like, a, like a boat on water. Like this in one way and the other. No, but I, I'll What do you think to that, Kieran? Uh, I think it was a great experience. When it first started moving or when you reported it was moving, the bizarre thing for me was that I didn't feel it moving. Yeah, just no. because the situation is so meditative and you're yeah. in such an yeah. unnatural position yeah. that even when it wasn't moving, 
I felt yeah. like, oh, is it moving? Isn't mm. it moving? I mm. can't really tell. And it was only when it became more pronounced that I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, mm. it is moving, and even lifted my fingers off. This is the first time we have ever attempted table tipping, and the results have, it has to be said, stunned us all. During the night, we monitored all of the rooms, and members of our team did investigate the area surrounding the standing stones. No further evidence could be found, but with so many incidents of what appeared to be some form of communication, it really has been an eventful night at Kinnity Castle. Well, um, this is the end of the most incredible 24 hours at uh, Kinnity Castle. I've been to lots of places, but um, I don't think I've ever had quite such positive responses. One of the best, I think, was the fact that Carl went up to the Geraldine room, and although not a lot happened to him actually in that room, while he was in the corridor, he was actually touched on the face by something. And then the incredible saga is the only way I can refer to it, of the original part of the monastery, the cells down below. And I started asking questions and I was getting a response. It's communicating all right. It's communicating, Richard. So I went down again with the girls, with Kerry and Rachel. And oh my God, all hell let loose because it started to respond again. If you're still there, bang on the ceiling. It was so positive. I have now such fond memories of Kinnity Castle that I'll definitely be back. By far the most interesting thing that happened at Kinnity Castle was the auditory phenomena experienced down in the gym. At one particular point, Richard and Derek were actually communicating with the knocking sound that was occurring, believing it to be a spirit. Also later on, some of the girls actually went down with Richard. <gasps> there was knocking heard. It appeared to have come from above. However, Carl and myself went to an adjoining room where there was a sauna, and on the back of the sauna there appeared to be a, a boiler of some sort with a delay timer on it. So for me, that's a satisfactory explanation of the auditory phenomena that occurred. During the investigation, Carl actually felt as though somebody had literally taken their hand across his face. We've got to be very, very careful of phenomena reported in this sort of way, especially in a known haunted location where it is very, very dark and anything that happens, we immediately attribute it to something paranormal or to ghost intervention. I'm not running away from it. It could have been as innocent as cobwebs or insects or something that brushed past his face. Please move the table. In Kinnity Castle, table tipping was attempted. There was a slight moving of the table at one point. However, I have to be a little apprehensive about whether we can attribute the movement to anything paranormal. You've got to be very careful when a group are standing around a table to ensure that everybody trusts each other. And unfortunately, there was one member of the group, Con, who people just weren't familiar with. Who's that? Richard and Derek reported seeing a figure move by one of the windows when they were down in the gymnasium. The first instant natural explanation that I have is that it was actually somebody walking by the window. The crew went out and checked immediately and realised there was nobody outside, so we can rule out that explanation. Another effect may that may be at work is being aware of what Richard and Derek have seen, then looking at the footage and reading into the footage the apparition or the ghostly figure. However, I'd like to look at the footage a lot more closely and find for myself if there is actually a figure there. From bumps and bangs to physical movement, how close has Kinnity Castle brought the most haunted team to supernatural spirits? Until next time, sleep tight.